So please welcome Sophia Sufiva from Samar. While we are fiddling with the technology, uh, Talofa, Girana, and Bula. The presentation that I'm going to do is on behalf of the the NSOs in the Pacific. Just press this okay. Okay. And uh, title of my presentation is Pacific Six: Current Development and Future Changes. Uh, I'm from Samoa. Um, I'm the government statistician of Samoa. I spent 40 years in this office. And it's fun working for statistics. The topic for my presentation, as you can see, I thought I'll start with, with this slide of an indicator. Uh, the size of the NSOs. This is the staff members of the NSOs. And this will give you an idea of what we do and the level of development that we do in the Pacific, in the NSOs. Recently, uh, we are now working on, with uh, SPC, we are working on a a project called TIPS, and let me start by introducing how we came with this, how we started with this project. This project started with the Pacific Forum Economic uh, Ministers meeting, whereby they, they wanted to improve statistics collection in the Pacific. And this was followed by commissioning a benchmark study, which as a result of that, a 10-year strategy was designed and was put in practice. And I'm happy to inform you that uh, the person who's, who helped design the 10-year strategy was Len Cook and Paunga from Tonga. Um, out of this, uh, there has been a committee formed to manage and uh, run the 10 year strategy. 10 year strategy is divided into three phases. The first phase, four years, and the uh, last two phases, three years. Under the TIPS, there are six objectives, development objectives, as you can see. One is to undertake the key SIS collection. Two, producing an agreed core set of uh, statistics uh, indicators. Three, the capacity building within the statistics office. Four, improve data accessibility and utilization. And five, the innovative statistical tools that have been introduced in all the NSOs. And objective six, the national and regional statistics uh, governance function. This is dealing with the legislation and all that. What we achieve in, in our development, uh, Samoa had already implemented its national strategy for the development of CISICS. Seven other nations are in the final process of finalizing their NSDS. We are now able to organize a user producer forum uh, we are able to produce geospatial data. We are able to produce quarterly GDP. 
we are now able to talk to our user groups uh, on how to access our admin data. And we are now able to timely uh, to release our population and results and survey results on a timely basis. The challenge with the Pacific uh, NSOs, <coughs> of course, inadequate resources, the staff with multiple responsibilities. For example, if there are two staff members in an office, you will expect that person to do national accounts, census, and the rest. So we kind of have that check of all trades. Then we have a high staff turnover. This is a common problem with the NSOs. Geograph geographical spread of island leading to high cost of conducting surveys. Sus sustainability of program due to reduce donor funding. Most of the time we rely on donors to help us with our development. And as you can see that the donors are now starting to close their doors. So we ask our government to help us. Thank you very much. Is there any questions from the audience? Well, if not, I've got a quick question. What society, Jane, challenges? What are the main challenges you see ahead for the society? Well, I, I think the, the appreciation of um, statistics is the first challenge. challenge. And the uh, stats office are now trying to organize and uh, explain to the community the importance of statistics. And we use the media and, and, and other means of uh, communicating with the communities on the importance of statistics. As I said, we have use of group uh, forum uh, to explain to them how they can use the information and the use of the information to them. It's very, thank you very much. It sounds like a massive challenge, always getting the users to in yeah. use the data, but also for people to actually uh, understand its meaning and then how it's being used in society. Thank you very much. So our next speaker is Mrs. Taggy. So Taggy, okay. Uh, please welcome Mrs. Taggy and. Um, um, so who do we have here? I was hoping more donor agencies would be here. So we could sell our, our um, um, needs and wants. Um, kia ora and uh, I thank um, Stats New Zealand for uh, the invitation to uh, participate in the forum. And, uh, and I hope uh, we can share more of our um, um, challenges and, uh, and our, our achievements. So. Uh, I was, uh, firstly, I, I was saying to the Samoan uh, statistician, please go in and talk about the Pacific and let me talk about the Cook Islands as part of the Pacific. But um, of course, when you put a gentleman in there, they'll just run away with it. Um, <laughs> anyway, Cook Islands is a small people in the Pacific. And um, if uh, for those who have just uh, been traveling on in New Zealand, um, I think we've taken over the um, safety procedure or process in the, and all the air hostess has to do was to point at the exit. So Cook Islands has taken over Air New Zealand. Uh, so that's our contribution uh, to uh, New Zealand. Cook Islands is one, um, we are New Zealand citizens. Um, we, should I call ourselves as the territory of New Zealand or? We are self-governing um, in collaboration with New Zealand. So really, New Zealand stats should be looking after Cook Islands districts. Um, 
So we have a population of 15,000 at home, and I understand there's about 40,000 here in New Zealand. And I always think New Zealand statistics have underestimated the count of Cook Island population here because of our mix, uh, mixture of uh, half caste. So I think we're more than 40,000. Uh, Seventy percent of the residents live uh, in uh, Rarotonga, and that's where we are, and that's where the statistics office is. Um, we are not all about hula girls and drum beats. We actually do some work. <laughs> um, the Cook Island Statistics Office, um, we've been bandied around. Um, prior to the 1996, um, I pinpoint 1996 because we went through a whole uh, reform of the public sector. But prior to uh, 1996, we, ent we entertained autonomous uh, independent um, arrangement. But then in 1996, we were incorporated as part of the Ministry of Finance. Um, it's not such a bad thing. I think if you live closer to the purse string, then uh, there's a lot of things that you can achieve. We are mandated to uh, provide timely, uh, appropriate, relevant statistics for decision making and monitoring our developments. Um, although small, yeah, we actually produce a whole range of statistics similar to what Stats New Zealand uh, produced. The numbers may be small, the methodologies, classification, and everything else is basically the same. So you can understand the 10 staff, that's including me, a lot of time I have to come down to actually processing of the, of the data. Um, for our national accounts, we've gone into uh, first time the quarterly, uh, quarterly national accounts. It's very hard, um, basically, if you're depending on administrative records to actually produce um, some of the, the data. Um, our balance of payments, the last one was 2010. Um, our consumer price index, our recent one is quarterly 2013. It's not so bad for small island countries. Um, our overseas trade statistics, we've gone through a period of restructuring our um, tariff. So if custom tariffs changes, then the whole um, trade statistics will change. So, of course, custom doesn't consult with anybody. So they went ahead, in the middle of 2012, revamped the whole custom tariff. So if, you, if you're producing annual data, then we are, we've changed everything in August, so what of the rest of the... So we have to come up with some kind of decision how to incorporate or the consistency uh, over time of uh, trade statistics. And um, so that's the rest of our, um, of our statistics. And you can understand this bound to be two series done by probably one person. So uh, there are other things that we do too. Um, our services that we provide, uh, agriculture census, uh, agriculture do not have the mandates to conduct anything, a any, uh, let me recheck, they do have something to, to do. Um, they do not have the mandates to conduct censuses, so um, these are conducted under the um, Statistics Act. We also assist in the survey designs of family health and safety. Um, the, the name of that survey, we actually asked to change because it was um, violence. I mean, that, that, that word, it brings out that connotation of, uh, and people do not want to participate. So we actually changed the whole name, but the questions didn't change. So um, we assisted the, um, the Ministry of Culture in actually conducting a survey. Because when it comes into um, um, bidding for budgets, Ministry of Culture cannot really come to the, to the budget committee to, to actually justify the existence. But they're trying to, to uh, 
I think, to prove is that it's not only the tourism, the Ministry of uh, Tourism that actually bring in the revenue. It's because of what they, of their services, the, um, um, the um, um, events that they organize. It's, they're saying it's because of those events that tourists come to the country. So really, they should be getting part of the revenue that's been, or the, the budget that goes to, uh, to Ministry of uh, Tourism. So these are the kind of things that we get ourselves engaged in. And even to a point where our staff will be called in to um, design and probably maintain databases for, we, we are not all that clear, but I think we took one step ahead of everybody else and get ourselves into a learning uh, database. Our biggest project uh, out of the tips that uh, my colleague has um, alluded you to, uh, the, the, it's the uh, development of a national strategy for the development of statistics. Uh, we've been operating in a silo before, and um, our, our attitude was we're producing official statistics, this is it. Um, there's so many other information out there, and we're trying to get people um, buy in into the whole system. So. Basically, the uh, NSDS is supported by SBC, um, funded by Paris 21, and um, managed by a, uh, our NSDS is managed by a, a full-time NSDS coordinator, which we have pinched from Stats New Zealand. Uh, she's now a Cook Islander now. And more recently, because of the magnitude of the work, we have employed an assistant coordinator. So this process, um, we've gone through and assessed the whole national statistical system, which is, I think, a, a, a challenge in its own self. When you say statistics, everybody points the finger at the NSO. They don't think of the information they're collecting as statistics and that could be used by themselves. But um, throughout this whole process, I think um, there's a clear understanding or awareness uh, of uh, our roles at, as NSO and the wider NSS system. So um, we are putting together a plan in terms of improving our data collection and also statistical capacity. Our ongoing and future challenges. Um, I'll start off with a challenge. I will start off with a challenge and then bring up uh, the positives in the end. Uh, Statistics Act, it's really outdated, 1996, and it's basically uh, based on the New Zealand, um, the New Zealand 1950, um, yeah, 1959 Act. So it's still talking about pounds, shillings, and pence. So it's really uh, time to, uh, to review the act. Um, and that coordination, there's really no coordination in the wider NSS system. Um, there's limited capacity across the government in terms of uh, statistics. Uh, we understand that you cannot just put in a person and they become a statistician. These, these profession has to be grown. At least that's how I think of it. Um, and in terms of our users, there's a limited understanding on the value of statistics. Um, and our engagement with our producer users are very limited, and this is another real reason why we came, so we can learn from this forum how best we can take this to our users. And, uh, and also the, uh, the inability to articulate the data needs. Most of the time, we actually tell them, this is the data you need. It should be the other way around. Tell us what you need. But the NSDS process has brought the entire, this was the, I think the major achievement that we see ourselves as one team and improved our understanding in the role of um, how each of us play and 
interact, and also the political support in terms of, um, we talk about evidence base. Sometimes it's just lip service. People just say evidence base without really carrying out the whole evidence. And uh, one of the good things that came out is the willingness to admit the weakness in the system. Um, when we talk about data sharing, sometimes it's not really not wanting to, to give. It's because of the lack of confidence of the agency in their own data that they, the, um, the first thing to say is it's not available. It is available, but it's not in a form that you'll be comfortable with in, uh, in sharing. This is throughout this process, we came to find there's so much more out there. And we're trying to find solutions to this where we think we can borrow from Stats New Zealand. So um, we put on our web a roadmap for the Cook Islands NSDS, our sector data assessment, and our um, assessment report that's going to come up, and our action plan. So if you have any questions, my full-time NSDS coordinator will be happy to answer. Thank you very much. Our last speaker today is Charlie Russell, who is uh, on secondment for two years at Tokelau. That's right. Yep. That's right. Yep. So Charlie's going to talk to us uh, about what's happening in Tokelau. Cool. Thank you. Um, first of all, I just would like to apologize that uh, Kelly Louie couldn't be here. He's the national statistician of Tokelau and my boss. Um, unfortunately, a few things went awry and he just wasn't able to make it over for the forum. Um, so he asked me to step in and give the presentation on his behalf. My name is Charlie Russell. Um, I am the outgoing secondi to Tokyo. I um, have about one day left before I am replaced by my friend Yap, who may or may not be in this room. Yap, Yap, he's going to replace me to continue on the secondment relationship. Um, so a little bit about us. Um, at the 2013 population count, which we undertook in December, uh, it's not quite a census, it's much smaller, but We'll get into that at some other stage if you want to. Uh, there were 1,383 usual residents associated with Tokyo, so we're a very small country. Um, that population is roughly evenly spread across the three atolls, um, and Tokyo is about halfway between Auckland and Hawaii, so it is one of the most geographically isolated countries on Earth. You can only get to Tokyo by boat from Samoa. This is a nice 24 to 30 hour boat ride, and I say nice, I mean terrible. Um, um, but uh, it is the only way to get there. Um, Tokyo, across the three atolls, has about 12 square kilometres of land. So any way you really cut it, we are one of the smallest nations on Earth. So I can just, yes. So I really want, what I wanted to do today was just paint a little picture for you about what, uh, where our office exists in Tokyo and what we're trying to achieve over the next few years. So I'll give you a bit of an overview on our current operating conditions, a bit about our relationship with New Zealand, what are some of our aims and how we're going to get there. So our office consists entirely of one and a half FTE. So it's me and a half-time national statistician who is also a half-time national HR manager. <laughs> um, it's, uh, yeah, so the, the one full-time um, equivalent position has been in place since I've been seconded to Tokyo. Um, and it's, it's one of our biggest constraints, is the amount of work we can get done with the amount of people we have working. In 2013, Tokyo passed its first ever comprehensive stat statistics legislation. So the office was only legally established last year, but it's been, an o it's been more or less, uh, I guess, operating since 2009. Uh, we have limited outputs, but they are growing. We've had a census run since 1965, but due to uh, many reasons, we've lost pretty much all of that data up until 2001. Um, we run a quarterly CPI, which began in 2012. And we are currently uh, putting together work on a household income and expenditure survey. We operate um, in a central government building in Samoa, so we're 500 kilometres away from our own country. And then again, it's about 200 to 300 kilometres across the atolls. So no matter where you are in that wee triangle, you're isolated from each other. 
we have a high demand in saying that everybody expects us to be able to produce information with the same, I guess, uh, credibility and frequency as much larger nations. We have a very small public service trying to do the job of much, much bigger countries. We have a limited budget. Uh, just to paint you a little bit of a picture, um, the stats office budget excluding salary is about $60,000 a year. Um, and as I've said, we have very limited staff of just one and a half people. Tokelau is in a very tight constitutional relationship with New Zealand. We are a realm country like the Cooks and Nui, except that we are a non-self-governing territory by definition. So um, there is an administrator of Tokelau who is based in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade and he holds veto power over the laws passed by uh, Tokelau's parliament. Um, in saying that though, in practice we are very much self-governed. Uh, but in terms of the UN definition, we are a non-self-governing territory. New Zealand Aid provides basically all of Tokelau's government budget um, and an appropriation of around about or approximately $18 million a year. Uh, there are devolved responsibilities. Um, so essentially what that means is that the administrator has handed his responsibilities back to the Council for the Ongoing Government of Tokelau, which we operate in. Um, we have an ongoing secondment arrangement uh, with Statistics New Zealand, and that really grew out of the tight constitutional relationship we have with New Zealand. So Tokelau has had a long-standing um, relationship with Stats New Zealand going back to about 1991 when they first ran the census for Tokelau. Uh, since then, um, Stats New Zealand has helped run the 2001, 2000, no, 2006, 2011, and is already beginning to plan the 2016 census with them. So what are our aims? Given the fact that we are new and we are small, we want to strengthen our institution and the role of the office across government. So as I said, we only really began in 2009 and we were legally, legally established in 2013. Uh, we want to provide statistical leadership across the government and we now work very closely with a lot of government departments. Uh, a good example would be our recent work with both health and civil registration. Only about a third to a half of births and deaths are currently registered in Tokelau. Um, so building up that registration element is incredibly important. So we have a really, uh, we have a lot of investment in that area and we've been leading that work for the last couple of years. Um, we want to build a statistical capacity and understanding and use across government. Um, in the two years I've been there, we've run probably about 12 to 15 workshops, possibly more than that, across the three atoll, really teaching them through what the census results mean, how you can use them. We've used a lot of New Zealand examples like smoking, um, and we've also gone to them with each of our CPI releases and talked to them about what it's actually showing and what it actually means. Um, because of that, um, demand for statistics has grown significantly, which is both a blessing and a curse. Um, so it does mean that there's a lot of demands and we have to be very ruthless about managing our priorities. We really want to be a model agency. We, want to be, we, want, we see our job as promoting good practice, transparency and good government across Tokelau. So we see our role as being much more than just statistics. In statistics, obviously, you have to have um, very rigorous processes and policies around your data to ensure they are trusted and transparent. And we see that as actually being a reflection of government as a whole. Um, so yes, obviously, we want to grow our outputs. And I'll talk a little bit about that. We also want to grow our users as well. So how are we going to achieve all of this? Well, we're certainly not going to reinvent the wheel. Our main three words, our buzzwords, are adopt, harmonise and use. So what we want to do is borrow from wherever possible. We've passed the UN Fundamental Principles of Official Statistics about two years ago now. This helps us to ensure a robust office in making transparent releases and in being accountable for our decisions. We use the generic business process model wherever possible. While of course it's important as a statistics agency to be using that process model, it's also really good for us to use it in communicating with other government departments. They often don't have a good understanding of how you have to go about statistical collection. After all, it is essentially a science and so you do have a process, a structure for doing it. Um, but the most important thing is, is that we don't borrow everything willy-nilly. They have to be harmonised to our unique environment and our culture. So the way that STATS uses the fundamental principles is not necessarily the same way we do. 
Uh, we really want to build our regional and international partnerships. It was a coup for us to get a first secondment from Stats New Zealand, and I would argue it's been a coup to get another secondment. So they, we had to argue quite hard um, to push them to, to investing another secondment round, and as we've been very lucky in, in convincing them that it's been worthwhile. We are building our relationships with the, uh, the Secretariat for the Pacific Community, who are going to help us run a household income and expenditure survey over the next couple of years. Uh, the Samoa Bureau of Statistics helps us with our CPI from time to time, as well as Stats New Zealand. And we also work alongside other Pacific NSOs. Morgan and I, for example, were sharing many emails over the NSD pro NSDS process because we can share a lot of our information, share a lot of our experiences, and come to mutual understandings for how to tackle problems. So in summary, we have an ambitious, an ambitious program, uh, an ambitious vision, but with very little resources. So in order to get around those issues, we need to be innovative and coordinated. Uh, and of course, we need to be um, coordinated both regionally and internationally. So if there's a particular international program of development going on, sometimes that means we need to drop our plans and get on board. It's not always easy for us to influence the international stage when we are a very small country. Um, often they say, often the international stage looks at us and says, well, New Zealand should be doing that for you. Why are we doing it? And New Zealand goes the other way and says, why don't you guys look at the international stage and see what they're doing? So sometimes we are caught between a rock and a hard place. Uh, we have to pick our battles. We can't do it all at once. We have to choose which parts we're going to do, and then we try to do them very, very well. Um, I've said there, prioritise. Obviously, that's a key element. We need to prioritise every single decision we make when it comes down to using the staff time of one and a half people. Um, so I guess, yeah, that's, that's, that's it for us. Um, we are a slow, we are a small office, but we are building, I think, a really solid platform. And our vision is to really be an outstanding NSO in the Pacific region, despite the limitations of our size and our outputs. Cool. Thank you. Oh. Just one last thing, if you want to get in touch, that's our website where we release all of our information and our policies and our generic email address as well.